الله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الأولين والآخرين إلى قيام يوم الدين From the divine responsibilities of the divinely selected imams you find is that they guide people towards the right path and you will find that within Islamic history if you were to analyze the history of each and every one of the Imams from Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba all the way up to Mawlana Sahib al-Amri was Zaman you will notice that the primary message of each and every one of those Imams was to invite the people towards the Wilaya of Mawlana Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi and you find that Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam was exceptional in every Imam was exceptional but there are certain stances of Imam al-Hadi that stand out when it comes to defending the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen therefore if you want to understand Imam Ali ibn Muhammad al-Hadi and we are in this place which is Mubarak, in the Haram of Imam al-Hadi, by the grave of Imam al-Hadi in his house. If you would want to understand who is Imam al-Hadi, in one statement, the defender and the protector of the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'minin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. We ask, what is the dalil for this? The dalil for this, we have two proofs, and you find this within the books of the Ad'iyah, including Mafatih al-Jinan. There are two ziyaras that are particularly narrated by Imam Ali ibn Muhammad al-Hadi pertaining to the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen. The first ziyara is Ziyaratul Ghadir. This is ziyara which is absolutely important to recite on Eid al-Ghadir. This ziyara which denotes bay'ah to Mawlana Amir al-Mu'mineen was taught to us by Imam Ali ibn al-Hadi. In my humble opinion, advice to myself and advice to the viewers that it is necessary and imperative as lovers and followers of Ahlul Bayt that we read this Ziyaratul Ghadir which is narrated by Mawlana Imam Ali Al-Hadi and we contemplate over the words and you find that the depth and the reality of religion is contained within Ziyaratul Ghadir. The depth and the reality of Imama is understood in Eid Al-Ghadir. I select one statement that we recite in Eid al-Ghadir taught to us by Imam al-Hadi in regards to the importance, in regards to the centrality of wilaya and imama to the deen of Islam. Look at what Imam al-Hadi says. Ashhadu ya amir al-mu'mineen anna shaka feek ma amana bir rasul al-ameen. Ajeeb. Imam al-Hadi says, I bear witness, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, anna shaka feek ma amana bir rasul al-ameen. The one who doubts in you, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I bear witness that the one who doubts in you, Aslan did not even believe in Rasulullah. Yani to doubt the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen, According to Imam al-Hadi, Hujjatullah fil ard, Ma'asum Imam, the one who doubts in the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'minin, the one who has shak in the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'minin, Aslan ma'amana bir rasul. Aslan didn't even believe in Rasulul Amin. This is the message that is given, us, given to us by Imam al-Hadi. Yahi, if to doubt Amir al-Mu'minin, Imam al-Hadi says, is to disbelief in the message of Rasulullah, then what about those people who fought Amir al-Mu'mineen? Whether they fought him in Jamal, or in Naharwan, or in Siffin, the one who waged war against Amir al-Mu'mineen, who killed him and killed his supporters. And you find that in regards to this, there is another ziyara which is narrated to us by Imam al-Hadi. And if you look into the history of Imam al-Hadi, you will find that he was very staunch in encouraging and establishing the institution of ziyara, as we mentioned before, ziyara of Imam al hussein even though people were getting killed and they had to give their limbs uh, as sacrifice in order to go for ziyara. But you find that in addition to that, one of the ziyaras which is narrated, to, narrated by Imam al-Hadi is ziyarat al-Jami'ah. There are a number of ziyarat within our books of Ad'iya, books of Dua, that are known as Ziyaratul Jami'ah. There is a number of them. One of these ziyaras is narrated by Imam al-Hadi. 
And again, Ziyaratul Jami'ah is a beautiful ziyara with great depth, ma'arif, treasures from underneath the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you find inside Ziyaratul Jami'ah. Again, advice for myself and advice for you. Whenever you get a chance to recite Ziyaratul Jami'ah, think on the meanings, contemplate on the meanings, particularly those lovers and followers of Ahlul Bayt who have uh, the opportunity and the blessing to go for Ziyarat, be it at the time of Ashura or Arafah or in the Ziyarat of Arba'iniyya, recite Ziyaratul Jami'ah at any one of the harams and read the translation or the meanings and contemplate over the depth. To illustrate one of these meanings, you have again Imam Ali al Hadi alayhi salam in Ziyaratul Jami'ah says, when he's addressing the Ahlul Bayt, one part of the Ziyarah he says, Assalamu alaykum ya abwaab al Iman. He addresses the Ahlul Bayt, yani he teaches us to address the Ahlul Bayt by saying to them, Assalamu alaykum ya abwaab al Iman. Yani, Peace be upon you, salam be upon you, the doors to Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many times in the Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Imam al-Hadi is telling us that in order for you to be considered in that bracket of mu'mineen, in order for you to possess the trait of Iman, the door of Iman is Ahlul Bayt. It is not possible to gain Iman without the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt. And you find that under these difficult and complex times, Imam al-Hadi bravely comes out and through the institution of Ziyarah, he teaches us the importance, the centrality, the divinity of Imamat when it comes to the religion of Islam. Imam al-Hadi salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi was martyred during the time of the Abbasid Khalif by the name of Mu'taz la'anatullahi alayhi. And the narrations mention that he brought forward poisoned pomegranates, which he then forced the Imam to eat in front of him. The historians tell us that when Imam al-Hadi consumed this poison grape, poison pomegranate, the intensity of the poison within this pomegranate was such that the Imam his entire body began to swell up and the complexion of his blessed face changed to be extremely pale because of the poison. For three days the Imam suffered due to the poison administered to him by Mu'taz. The narration mentions that on the final night of his life, before his ruh ascended towards the heaven, he was lying down on the floor, sometimes turning to the left and sometimes turning to the right out of pain due to the poison that was administered to him. Another one of the companions mentions that the Imam says, it is as if my interiors are being cut into pieces by swords due to the impact of the poison. And it is in this state that Imam al-Hadi calls his son Imam Hassan al-Askari and Imam al-Askari is by his chest at his final moments. Imam al-Hadi looks at him and he begins to cry. And he says to him, O oh my son Hassan, convey my salams to the one who is the savior of mankind after you. Yani grant my salams or give my salams to the awaited Mahdi. Allahu Akbar. Imam al-Hadi, even on his deathbed, his final words is that he remembers Mawlana Sahib al-Amri was Zaman. The narrations mention that Imam al-Hadi appointed Imam al-Hassan al-Askari as the final Imam. He gave him the Dhulfiqar, he gave him the Jami', he gave him the Mus'haf, he gave him the Aqiq, the ring of the Imams. And this is from amongst the inheritances of the left behind by the Imam. He gives this to Imam Hassan al-Askari. The narration mentions that he then straightened his legs, he straightened his hands, he recited the Shahada for the final time. He looked at Imam Hassan al-Askari and the remainder of his family looked up towards the heaven. The sweat of death began to drop down his forehead and the ruh of Imam Ali al Hadi left the dunya. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. The narration mentions that Imam Hassan al-Askari tearfully gave a ghusl to his father Imam al-Hadi and when the janaza came out of the house the narration mentions that Imam Hassan al-Askari came out behind the funeral of his father without an amama bare feet 
with his with his inside uh, robe imam al askari had torn the robe out of grief fashakkal juyub or fashakkal jayb this tearing the garment and tearing the gown out of grief imam al askari comes out in this manner people at that time they rebuked imam al askari for coming out of the house in this fashion and from what is understood in the narrations that there were people who were followers of imam al askari because they came to him and they said to him tayyabna rasulullah you are the son of the prophet you are the imam it's not befitting that you come without an amama without slip without shoes and with garments that are torn imam al askari says to him wo be upon you do you not know that musa wept over harun in the same way and you find that this companion keeps quiet and this ya ahibai is a lesson for you and i that many times when it comes to commemorating the grief of ahlul bayt particularly the grief of imam al hussein sometimes there are particular acts of mourning a particular acts of uh, grief that you and i may not accept or adhere to but it does not befit for us to come and belittle them or to uh, condemn them particularly keeping in mind that a lot of these are warranted if not all of them are warranted by the ahlul bayt inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire us to study the life of Imam al-Hadi to be able to draw lessons from the life of Imam al-Hadi we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to implement the teachings of Imam al-Hadi in our lives and insha Allah we get an opportunity to visit Imam al-Hadi's haram in the dunya and seek his shafa'a in the akhirah from this blessed shrine of Imamain al-Askariyain in Samarra fi amanillah